My name's Jonathan Weiner, and I'm a mastering engineer. You know, the, the first thing to know about neutron, like the basic function, mm -hmm. you know, it's EQ, it's, a, it's a, both a clean or a vintage EQ, it's a clean or a vintage compressor, it's got a transient designer, all very high quality. The EQ is essentially the same EQ as you get in ozone. Um, so it's, you know, it's mastering quality, mm. if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, the, the, the quality level is very, very good. Um, that's great, but there's some special, mm -hmm. I think kind of first, first time ever we've seen functions like what we're seeing mm -hmm. here in Neutron. I'd like to talk uh, mm -hmm. about a couple of them mm -hmm. with you. So the first thing is mm -hmm. when you pull Neutron up into a session, Neutron is aware of every other instance of Neutron. Mm. And that's going to become important later mm -hmm. when we start talking about a mm -hmm. function called the masking meter. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So um, Neutron understands, I've got six instances of Neutron mm -hmm. in my session. Mm -hmm. Now, right? Now, right? You see them right there. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the next feature I want to talk about is this thing called Track Assistant. Mm. So what is a track? What is an assistant? Ass an assistant is something that helps Help. you get mm -hmm. started. Mm -hmm. And that's really what this is about. Okay? So the way you use track assistant is you load it on a track. It can be on a mono track, a stereo track. It could be on a bus, like, you know, like a, a drum bus or mm -hmm. something like that. And that's mm -hmm. actually what we've got here. You see this says drums here. This is a, a, a mixed drum kit already. Uh, and I'll start playing the track. And while I'm doing it, I'll hit Track Assistant, mm -hmm. okay? And it's analyzing the audio. It's actually listening to it. And if you look back here, you can see there's stuff happening in the plugin. So it listens for about five or six seconds. And what it's doing is comparing that signal to what it understands about audio already. And it's analyzing it, and it's told us, look down here on the lower right-hand side, this is drums. Wow. How does it know? Because we've used machine learning, wow. right? This kind of artificial intelligence idea to feed yeah. uh, into com a computer Very lots futuristic. and lots and lots of recordings of drums. So the computer kind of understands something about what drums look like. That's right, but you're still in control, right? I mean, it's not making decisions, it's making some suggestions. So, let me show you. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and run it on the bass. Mm -hmm. Also, let me make sure I'm. There we go. It, it found out that it's a bass. It offered an EQ curve. Okay. And actually, let's listen to it. And so, you know, as I go along, I'll say, do I like it? Cool. Maybe I want a little less of the exciter. Every module has a, a wet dry mix. So instead of going in and tweaking the settings, if I like the general idea, I can just choose a little bit less of it or a little bit more, or I can go in and adjust. Maybe I want a little bit more of that bass to come back into it. Very smart. Yeah, it's got a little yeah. bit more definition. It's got a little bit more warmth, right? You, you can hear this EQ change that it made. It pulled out that sort of aww kind of, you know, that thing that was probably going to get in the way of the vocal track. There's one extra little piece of... Uh, sort of special sauce, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. Under here, we've mm -hmm. got this thing called Neutrino. Mm -hmm. And Neutrino is like an optimizer for bass sounds mm -hmm. or for drum sounds or vocal sounds, whatever it's determined the track to be. And you can actually adjust that individually down here. So it's like a little bit of, of um, it's very subtle, but a little bit of special filtering to kind of initially move the sound into a better place and then apply EQ and compression and so on. But everything can be turned on and off, you know, to the extent that you want it. So you run the track assistant mm -hmm. and you should have a basic setting that's going to work for your whole track. 
right? So unless you have uh, an instrument that radically changes, in which case you might need to run, maybe split it onto two different tracks mm -hmm. and run mm -hmm. Neutron on one part and then another part, but usually you can just leave the setting just the same way you would with an EQ or a mm -hmm. compressor mm -hmm. uh, once you've run it. So you just find a, a section where that instrument is active and run it one time, mm -hmm. okay? So here are a couple of things that you want to do if you want your mix to turn into the best possible master, okay? Make sure your peak level isn't any more than like minus three, minus four, something like that. Don't worry about pushing the level all the way to the top. Get the balance right and make it sound as good as possible. Don't try to be clever and think, well, it's going to get bright in mastering, so I'll make it dull, or it's going to get full in mastering, so I'll make it thin. So get the mix as good as possible. Uh, and then the last thing is, if you're going to work with somebody else as a mastering engineer, tell them what you want. Tell them what you think. This is your project. You're the artist. So make sure that you hold on to your vision and that that gets satisfied by the mastering.